just like that, John Aaron was dead. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it's true. The royal seal and the missive were still unbroken when the Raven arrived. That would mean that he passed shortly after I left King's Landing. I will pray to the Seven that his soul receives the welcome it deserves. He was a great man. In his letter, he mentioned being wary of those around him. He feared for his life and talked about enemies of the realm who were preparing to strike. A troubling coincidence. I'll wager it has something to do with the girl. Who knows? In any case, he must have thought her very important. Do you still hope to carry out your mission, Sir Donnelly? Yes. I shall not betray my lord's last wish. I must finish carrying out his orders and find a safe place for the girl. Now that we have an idea of where she is, there is no need to trouble you any longer. Uh, you underestimate the Mole's Town Tunnels. They're quite a labyrinth for newcomers. You'll need my expertise. I would also prefer one of us to accompany you. I'd rather know what's going on in the gift. Very well. I have a host of men waiting south of Castle Black on the way towards Molestown. I hope to meet with them and gather any news before proceeding. Jared, my lieutenant, will have warned my men of our arrival. I'm counting on you, Moors. Report to me when you've finished your mission. We'll leave immediately. I just need to make sure of one last thing. As you wish, sir. Theomar! Dick! Vion! I shall accompany Sir Donnelly to Molestown. His camp is close by. I am counting on you to get there as soon as possible. You must ensure that peace is maintained in the gift. Very well, Moors. Let us ride, sir. It's a long way to Molestown. I'm right behind you. John Aaron. Dead. I still can't believe it. That lie old fox was tougher than Valerian steel. Yes, it's unfortunate news. But I won't let it interfere with the mission he assigned me. I think we're close. My men would have set up camp in the area. Sir Donnelly, did everything go well in Castle Black? All is well. As we had hoped, the Night's Watch is here to help us. I gave Sir Westford the missive I have here. He knows where to find the girl. What's going on here? Let me hear your report. We were able to position some men here and scout the area. The region seems safe. We're in Night's Watch territory. The lands are obviously well protected. Of course, my lord. Jared passed this way. He took some men with him to scout the village south of here. I never promised such a thing. Jared forgets who gives the orders here. I'll make sure to remind him in due time. We'll continue our journey, Sir Westford. Let's go towards Molestown, where we'll probably find Jared. Robot, stay in your position and await my return. As you wish, sir. Don't talk. You know something. Spill it before I scatter your teeth onto the floor. Please, I beg you. I don't know what you're talking about. I swear, I'm but a simple traveling merchant. Enough, Jared. What? Oh, uh, it's you, Sir Godric. This peasant refuses to answer my questions. Leave him alone. You, you can leave. Very well, my lord. Thank you. I haven't finished with him. Yes, you have. No one tortures the people of the gift without good reason. And you'll do what? Hang me, like you did my brother? Try it. I could use a laugh. Hold your tongue. Believe me, if I felt like killing you, I wouldn't have need of a noose. No one talks to me this way, especially not a crow from that damned wall. Shut your mouth, Jared. You disgrace us when you speak to Sir Westford that way. But Silence! Return to camp and await me there. Sir Westford, his behavior is unacceptable. I offer my most humble apologies. Just make sure he doesn't delay us. I'll keep an eye on him. How do you plan on finding the girl? John Aaron's letter mentions the whores at the brothel. We'll start there. Do you think they'll talk? The Night's Watch is in charge around here. I've had a few dealings with the local madam before, when sworn brothers. 
found their way to her establishment. If she knows something, I'll soon find out. The hamlet seems tiny. We'll have gone through it in no time. Don't let yourself be fooled. The Mall's town is much bigger than it seems. More than three quarters of the town is underground. The underground tunnels were dug by several generations of people. Living below the surface protects them from the cold. And in the midst of the tunnels is the whorehouse. I'm sure that's where we'll find the girl. This much was clear in the letter. I see. So she's hidden among the whores. Few would think to look for her there. Lord John Aaron certainly was a diligent man. If it isn't the great Moors Westford, hero of Castle Black, what can I do for you, handsome? Why don't you join me in my chambers, and I'll show you what a real woman can do. The day the wall collapses, I'll think about your proposition. Charming as usual. So, what are you here for? Come to take your lost crows home? Walder brought in a new boy. I believe his name is Patrick. They're in the back. Do with them what you will. But no brawling in my establishment. No, I'm not here for pleasure. I'm looking for a girl. Then you're here for the same reason as everyone else. What is your pleasure? Fair hair? Brown hair? Dancers? A girl skilled with a tongue? I'm looking for a recent arrival. Not a whore. Just a girl from the South. A girl from the South? I do strive to provide something for every taste here. But girls from the South? Now, why don't you try Alice and Berina? They're twins. Our clients love them. And since you're a first-time customer, I'll give you a discount. What do you say? Enough horseshit, Sybil. I know the girl was sent to Molestown, and I'm sure you know where she's hiding. You're mad, Moles. If you're not here for my beer or for my girls, I must ask that you leave. Listen, Sybil. This girl is in considerable danger. I believe that the men chasing her may have been involved in the death of the King's Hand. The King's Hand was assassinated? Moors, you must be joking. When have you ever known me to be joking? If these people were powerful enough to assassinate the King's Hand, it won't be difficult for them to track her here. Well, what would you do if you found her? The King's Hand wanted this girl protected. I'm here to make sure that happens. I'm sure I can protect her better than you and your girls can. Very well. I know that you're a man of honor. I hope I don't regret this decision. The girl's name is Jane Greystone. She's been hiding here for some time. I thank you for your trust, Sybil. Now, where is the girl? She's in one of my rooms. Downstairs. Go down the stairs, turn left. It's the last door on the right. But don't you dare hurt her. Don't worry. I'm here to protect her. Thank you for your help. Any of you want to play come into my castle with me? Don't be shy. This is big enough for all of you. Oh my lord, thanks for helping me earlier. Without you, I would have lost a few teeth back there. Come closer, you two. Take a look at our selection of wares. The mule will show them to you. Who gave you permission to speak to me? Oh, I beg your pardon, my lord. I did not mean to offend you. I just wanted to help the Night's Watch. Listen, Peddler. Some of the wildlings I confronted just recently were armed with steel blades. That seemed a bit strange, because wildlings do not forge steel, so these weapons must come from our side of the wall. And then I happen upon your traveling shop here. I've nothing to do with that, my lord. I would never do such a thing. I have my merchant's honor to uphold, 
That's right, and you'd do well to remember that. You can stay one or two more days to sell the locals what they need, nothing more. When you're finished, go back to the south. If I hear that you've strayed further north, or have overstayed your welcome, I'll find you. Yes, my lord. I swear. I'll leave as soon as I'm done. Why, it's Moors. I wasn't expecting to meet you here. Would you shut up? You've taken your vow so recently, your words still hang in the air, Patrick. Please, Moors, you know the Lord Commander turns a blind eye to this sort of thing. Just look at the poor bugger. All of your fellow watchmen are dead. You know how it is. He needs to pick up his spirits. I can speak for myself, Walder. Moors, would you care to join in our discussion? I don't know much about you, Patrick. I hear you used to be into smuggling. I don't really want to talk about that, Moors. Don't be shy, you're amongst brothers here. You've probably seen plenty of interesting things in your life. Tell us. First of all, I was not a smuggler. Weren't your crimes what led you to take the black? Very well. If you really want to know, like half the men at the wall, I was once a farmer, with fertile lands and a family. Then one day, I lost everything. I was out hunting for stag, and when I returned home, there was nothing but smouldering ruins left. The wildlings were raiding along the coast, and it led them right to my home. My wife. She wasn't the type to let herself be pushed around by anyone. If you saw what they did to her... Seven hells! Every last one of those wildling monsters deserves to die. All I had left was my war hammer. I found it while marching with the Starks during the rebellion. All I could do was take my boat and follow the scum across the Bay of Seals. Once I got to the other side of the wall, it was easier than I'd expected. They probably thought they were out of arm's way and they were careless. They didn't even try to cover their tracks. When I finally caught up with them, it was dark out. The swine were getting drunk on what they'd stolen from me. So I waited for my moment. After a while, most of them could no longer stand. And that's when I went for them. First, I killed the watchman. But then one of their men saw me and cried out. It became a bloodbath. The drink had made them slow of foot and awkward. It made it easy for me. I don't know how long the killing lasted. When it was over, I was covered in blood, wounds, my clothes slashed to shreds. I said to myself, Pat, you're a dead man. Might as well let the coal take you. I let myself drift off. When I opened my eyes, I was in Castle Black. I had been picked up by rangers who'd discovered the camp. It took me a month to heal. In that time, I was accused of everything by the brothers of the Night's Watch. Smuggling, being a wildling, and I just couldn't convince otherwise. So, as soon as I was able to walk again, I was given the choice. Take the black, or the noose. You suffered an injustice, but you had the right of it to join us, brother. You have a new family now. Incredible! I didn't know a killer like you was one of our recruits. What about you, Walder? How did you get to the wall? Hmm, let me think about it for a minute. Where to begin? I think I know what you want to talk about. Say nothing, Moors. You'll spoil the surprise. You see my necklace, Patrick? The High Septon gave it to me personally. The High Septon? The head of the Faith of the Seven? You must be joking. I swear it's true. He's right. But I'm not sure you really want to hear the story. On the contrary, I would like to hear it. Very well. I had a simple, humble and poor life, like you, Patrick. Much like any other peasant in the Seven Kingdoms, you might say. I had a wife, Shori. She was delicate and buxom, always smiling, a good woman, never complained without good reason. She was devoted to the Seven and always ready to aid her neighbor. The best day in my life was the day she agreed to marry me. But all good things come to an end. She fell ill while with child. I sold everything to pay for her treatment. My livestock, my fields, and even my home. 
All that, only to be sold false remedies by swindlers preying on my love. When I finally figured out what they were doing, I pounced on two of the filthy whore sons and gave them what they deserved. I beat them bloody and took my time over it, too. You chose your destiny, as we did ours. I wasn't expecting that from you, Walder. I'd mistaken you for a skilled thief. It would have been better if I was. I probably wouldn't be here now. I spent 20 years of my life protecting this piece of ice. And unlike you, if I had to do it all again, I wouldn't. So that's when they caught you? No, no, let me finish. Shuri held out until the end of her pregnancy, so that the child could survive. She suffered more than I imagined possible. The day she went into labor, I was alone with her. Giving birth to our daughter was too much strain. It killed her. I buried her that same evening. I wanted a better life for my little girl, a different life. I swore by the Seven that she wouldn't end up like her mother, that she would only have the best. The following day, I left home carrying what was left of my possessions on my back to baptize my little girl into the faith. I walked for more than three weeks, feeding my little girl as I could and praying each day that she would survive. I eventually reached King's Landing. I knelt before the wondrous gold and crystal dome of the Great Sept. Once inside, an old Septon welcomed me. I told him my story. I confessed everything. He listened attentively. I cried on his shoulder, and he comforted me with soothing words. Afterwards, he took my daughter in for observation. He asked a servant to bring him some goat's milk, and that's when I understood. That old man wasn't just a Septon. He was the High Septon himself. Really? Yes. He said if I handed myself in to the King's justice, they would take care of my daughter. He would personally ensure that she'd have a good life. And you gave yourself up? Just like that? That's right. I gave them my little girl and handed myself over to the King's justice. When they brought me in, the High Septon personally gave me this necklace. For me, it represents my absolution. Quite a story. Yeah, I suppose so. But yours wasn't too bad either. Each and every sworn brother has his tale to tell. And none of them are enviable. What about you, Morse? Why did you come to the wall? I can't talk now, Patrick. I have affairs to attend to. I must go. I'll turn a blind eye this time, but don't linger here too much longer. We'll have another round and then we're off, I promise. Her belongings are still in the room. She obviously left in a hurry. This trinket must be hers. Her perfume still clings to it. The trail is still fresh. It should be no problem finding her. May the stranger take me. A crow this far from its home? It's the butcher. Mind yourself with that one. Of course. But we could say this is our territory. We... May the stranger take me. A crow this far from its home? It's the butcher. Mind yourself with that one. Of course. But we could say this is our territory. We don't approve of strangers stomping around here. Silence your tongue, Ben. You trying to get us killed? What should we do, my lord? What are you doing here? We're here on business. Nothing out of the ordinary. Do you think you can easily fool me? I know the both of you. So spill your secrets before I make spill something else of yours. Please, we're only carrying a few goods to help out our friends. Smuggled goods. A girl came through here recently. 
Did you see her? If a lass had come through here, we'd have noticed it, my lord. Sorry, we've seen nothing. Consider yourself lucky this time around. If I catch you smuggling again, I won't be so lenient. Now, out of my way. Listen to the Black Brother Bran. We will obey you. I don't get involved in wars. The girls seem to trust her. Moles, what are you doing here? I'm looking for a girl, a newcomer to Molestown. You haven't seen her in the area? I haven't moved for over an hour. And aside from all, I haven't seen much. And you? What are you doing here? Why are you camping out in front of this door? It's a sorry tale, Mors. We found one of our men in his room earlier. His chest was ripped open and his heart ripped out. Work of a wildling, if you ask me. Looks like a slaughterhouse in here. A wildling in Molestown? I don't believe it. We would have heard word by now if wildlings had been spotted. We'll see. The old bear has sent an officer to investigate this matter. You best be on your way. The area is sealed off until we get new orders. I see. Good luck. You are at last, young lady. You couldn't get much further anyway. Is that her? Yes. There's no doubt about it. The trail leads right to her. Who are you? I am Moors Westford, a ranger of the Night's Watch. The King's Hand sent us to find you. The Night's Watch? The last time I crossed paths with one of you, he tried to steal from me. You're the girl that Craven Deserter tried to steal from. He was no longer a brother of ours. He was a traitor to our order. And that was my dog that saved you from him back in the woods. I thought I'd seen that animal before. Enough. Sir Mors, you can leave us now. You have completed your mission and the Crown will show you its gratitude for this. You aren't a member of the Night's Watch. Indeed. This is Sir Godric Donnelly, Lord Arryn's emissary. He is responsible for your protection. Come with me, Jane. I am here to take you to a safe place. A safe place? I know, Sir Donnelly. You don't look like him at all. Stop with the games, little girl. Go to hell, imposter! Silence! Tell me, child. You say you know Sir Donnelly. Where and when did you last meet him? At King's Landing, a little while before I left. It's because of him that I'm freezing up here. So yes, I do remember his face. Be reasonable, Jane. Our Lord's last wishes were to take you to a safe place, which is exactly what I plan on doing. Liar! Something's rotten here. We'll return to Castle Black and figure out what to do. I'm afraid not, Sir Westford. Do you intend on opposing my Lord's orders? I know full well where my duty lies. This situation would not please the Lord Commander, and it doesn't please me either. Mormont will decide. This matter is closed. Thank you, my Lord. I don't understand why you are being so stubborn, Sir Westford. I'm asking you one final time to allow me to leave with the girl. Return to the wall and report that your mission was a success. My mission was to take this girl to safety, and I will. You can plead your case to the Lord Commander. Very well. I was hoping it wouldn't have to come to this, but you leave me no choice. I won't allow anyone to get in my way. Tougher than I imagined, Sir Westford. But you haven't heard the last of me. Bloodseekers, here! Kill the crow! Bring the girl back, dead or alive! I'll leave you to talk with my men. Resist if you will, but nothing will stop me from getting my hands on that girl. 
Not as long as I live. So be it. Thank you, my lord. If it weren't for you, I would no longer be alive. Follow me. Let's get out of this midden heap quickly before we get trapped here. That imposter thinks he can hide, but I'll hunt him down. Moors! Patrick, is all well? These soldiers attacked me when I was leaving Sybil's place, but I gave them a taste of my steel. Do you have any idea what's going on here? The man with me was an imposter, pretending to be Godric Donnelly, supposedly acting on behalf of the King's Hand. Be careful, Patrick. This brigand let his dogs loose on the Night's Watch. And they are everywhere. Be careful! Actually, I'm rather pleased you came to the brothel, but where is Walter? Don't worry about him. The cheap wine they serve at the ore house knocked him right out. Considering the circumstances, I'd rather leave him in the ore's capable hands. He'll be thanking the Seven when he wakes up. Seven hells. If we all get out of this mess alive, I'm going to have a talk with him. What's going on, Moors? Why are these men attacking us? The imposter and his men are here for the girl. But it doesn't seem like they plan on protecting her. So, if that man is not Godric, who is he? I'm not certain, but we can worry about that later. For the moment, it's more important to get to Castle Black. We're too exposed here. Thank you for what you've done, my lord. But I'd rather continue on alone. That's out of the question. The Lord Commander would like to talk to you. Furthermore, my old friend John Arryn asked me to protect you. So you're staying with me. You'll be safe within our walls. Our Lord Commander will find a solution. Since I have no choice, I suppose I'll go to the fortress with you. Happy to hear it. Patrick, this Godric imposter still has soldiers with him. Their camp is located between Castle Black and us. We must be very careful. What's the plan? We have to get past them, but simply plowing through them without a plan would be risky. Our best chances lie in discreet observation. Watch over the girl, and I'll handle finding a way. When things turn nasty, I'll need you to remain by my side and defend the honor of the Night's Watch. Understood, Moors. Now, let's go, and be on the lookout for an enemy ambush, even within the village walls. The imposter's clothes are burned. That whore son is craftier than I imagined. I can no longer track him by scent. I'll have to forget about following him for now. Do you agree? No problem. We'll wait for you to bring them here, then we can ambush them. Do not hold anything back. Maul's is a beast. You must strike fast strike hard. And when our task is done, you'll take us with you and give us our freedom. You have my word. I have no love for the North and the Godforsaken Wall. Me too! The Chief has paid you a handsome price. He must really want this girl. He has reason to pay such a high price. When you're up against the Butcher, 
You need to hire the best. Oars, Patrick! Good to see you both still alive! What are you still doing here? Did you see the man who was with me when I left Castle Black? The one who calls himself Godric? Yeah, we saw him running towards the campsite. He seems to have been involved in quite a fight. He gave a few orders and left soon after. How did you succeed in escaping without a scrape? You weren't attacked? Godric's men have been trying to kill all the brothers of the Night's Watch since we found the girl. We immediately sensed something was off, so we left quickly before they realized we were fleeing. They were too preoccupied with you, my brother. You were always a fool, Theomar. But I never thought you were stupid enough to betray me. What? How do I know? I... I heard you selling us out to those brigands. Die, traitorous scum. Damn them to hell! Why would they turn on us like that? The imposter corrupted them. They betrayed the Night's Watch, their own brothers. Unimaginable. I can only think of one thing that would cause all of this. Don't look at me that way. I know nothing of this man except that he's not who he claims to be, which does not bode well for the real Godric. We'll get to the bottom of this with the help of Mormont, as planned. We need to be twice as careful from now on. If some of your companions are traitors, there may be others. Perhaps. That's why we must reach the Lord Commander as soon as possible. I won't let the man responsible get away with this. It seems that our brothers died rich. Those half-wits. Gold is as useless on the wall as a suit of armor is at sea. Some filthy coward paid our brothers to turn their blades on us. Probably some mongrel impersonating Sir Donnelly. There you are, Moors. Methinks that the Lord Commander will be pleased to see you again. He's been watching for your return for a while now. Nice little trophy you have there. I can keep it warm for you. Keep your thoughts to yourself, Grants. I was only trying to be of service. <laughs> Moors, we were expecting you. I see you've found what you're looking for. Isn't Sir Godric with you? No, Jor. That vermin tried to kill me. He's an imposter. What? Tell me. I need to know everything. Yes, and without Patrick's help, we might not have made it back alive. This man was carrying a letter signed by John Arryn himself. If we find out that he does indeed serve the King's hand... I believe the girl. John Arryn would never have allowed his men to attack a sworn brother. I hope you speak the truth, Moose. You said the imposter took flight. Do you know where he's gone? He managed to cover his tracks, but I don't believe that he left the area. He seemed desperate to get rid of the girl. He will not stop until she is dead. Or until we stop him. But that's not the worst of it. This filth paid some of our own brothers to attack us. What? I sent Theomar and two other men to the imposter's camp to ensure that no further misdeeds take place. I ran into them again on our return trip. That's when they attacked us. Apparently, our enemies had enough time to convince them to betray us as they guarded the camp. Now that explains it. We arrested some of his men as they tarried in Castle Black without permission. I intended to deliver them to the Lord so that he could punish them himself. The incident appeared harmless, 
but now I fear it might be more serious than it seemed. We must sort this out. Bring the prisoners. We found out that your commander masqueraded as someone else so he could manipulate us and use the Night's Watch to further his own ends. A serious act punishable by death. You are his accomplices and will receive the same punishment. We had no idea, my lord. We're just soldiers. Do you take us for idiots? Why were you prowling around? We were sent here to soften up the Brothers of the Night's Watch. Admit it! You were here to turn them! Our master just wanted us to test the waters. To see if some of you would be willing to help us in exchange for your freedom. That's all. I see. So you did indeed have a hand in these vile acts. Whatever his crimes, a man may choose to be punished, or may take the black. I agree, Morse. Even in the midst of such an ordeal, we must uphold the interests of our Brotherhood. Do any of you prefer death to taking the black? Very well. Bring our new recruits to their quarters. These reinforcements will be a necessity during this troubled time. Other brothers were corrupted. It's now certain. Some have already fallen by your hand, but how many still remain? The imposter continues to roam our lands, and we cannot even trust our own men. <laughs> 